with the West Ham grudge match less than two days away. Tottenham's captain is available again and in a huge shock to everyone. One of their young starlets has signed a new contract. Meanwhile, more reports come in about Amanda Staveley's interest in buying the club. Paul Gascoigne has U-turned on his anger about Daniel Levy's miserly treatment of him and Pedro Porro continues to impress for the Spanish national team. Elsewhere, both Marcus Rashford and Anthony could be joining Alex Ferguson out of the exit door of Old Trafford, and Alexander Isak might fancy getting away from the North East. All this and more on today's episode of Daily Premier League News with me, Barnaby Slater. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Do press the like button, do subscribe if you can, and listen on the podcast platforms, be that Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Just type in the Spurred On podcast. But let's get started, of course, at my beloved Spurs. And rumours are that both Tottenham and Crystal Palace are both interested in 21-year-old Lille and Iceland winner Hakon Arna Haraldsson. What a name that is, Haraldsson. Haraldsson. We need another Icelandic player, don't we? We haven't had one for a while. Uh, looks like a decent talent. Again, sticking to the strategy that we know that Johan Langer and Spurs are now really cultivating. Get in the best young talent from across Europe, I guess, that Chelsea haven't tried to sniff out first. Uh, so let's see if there's more in that. Meanwhile, as I mentioned at the top, Son Hyung Min, according to Big Ange Postacoglu, is fit and available for the West Ham game at the weekend. As is, maybe more surprisingly, Richarlison. Um, Big Ange said he's been doing some good work this week uh, and that they always expected Sonny to potentially be fit for this game, but that Richarlison has come on a little more quickly. One thing I would say is that just so many occasions we brought Richarlison back. He's played kind of five to ten games and then has had another issue. I just really hope that he can actually get some fitness together now for Tottenham Hotspur. Otherwise, I really do fear that his days at the club are numbered. I really like him. I like his attitude. Uh, I think he's good around the squad. He's clearly an incredibly talented player, but if he does not play enough games for Tottenham Hotspur, he will not stay at the club. I'm pretty sure Ange will be ruthless about that. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think Richarlison is a good squad player for Spurs? Can you foresee us keeping him? We did pay, of course, kind of nigh on £60 million for him. And considering how little he's got on the pitch in now kind of you know, two seasons and a bit. He hardly played at all in his first season. He had a few runs of games last season, but too many injuries, too many times off the pitch, and we need him back and playing. But if he is available for the squad on Saturday against West Ham, then he is a really good option off the bench if we need to do something a little bit different. Uh, for instance, if in the last 20 minutes we need to start getting more crosses in to try and make something happen against a narrow, tight West Ham side then uh, bringing Richarlison on, maybe pushing Daki Kulisewski to the right and getting some of those whipped-in crosses from the right-hand side that Richarlison can nod in could be a really good option. Uh, Jed Spence yesterday signed a new contract with Spurs until 2028. And I love this bit of news. It's kind of come out of complete left field. I don't think anyone would expect it because, let's face it, you know, Jed Spence looked like he was on the way out for the last kind of year, 18 months or so. And then he impressed Big Ange Postacoglu in the preseason this summer and then he was left out of the Europa League squad and you thought mm, is Jed Spence going to react to that badly is he going to kind of show that he has attitude problems that have been talked about potentially before but no he knuckled down again and he's impressed Ange Postacoglu and the powers that be at Spurs so much that they have given him a new contract another four years uh, and I'm sure he's got a little pay rise for that as well and he's now definitely a huge option for both left back and right back um, as a squad player going forward. And the way that Destiny Odoggi played against Brighton in that second half, uh, although he did have a good uh, a good reaction to it for Italy in the week, but, um, you know, he's got to know now that it's just not a guaranteed place for him. And let's not forget, Spence did such an incredible job when he came on against Coventry, really saved that, saved our Carabao Cup uh, season by scoring that equaliser. And uh, I'm glad that he's got a, a little bit of security there. He's been shown by the club that they appreciate the work he's put in. And now he needs to go on to the next level and really try and push Pedro Porro and Destiny Udoggi and see if he can try and oust one of them. Also, of course, lots of reports doing the rounds at the moment that Real Madrid are interested in Pedro Porro. And uh, if Spurs got a bid they couldn't refuse for him, then Jed Spence would be first off the lot to replace him at right back. So uh, a good time to be Jed Spence. And a good time to be a Spurs fan, I think, with all of these young, impressive talents uh, all seemingly wanting to be at the club and wanting to grow with the club together. 
Now, Ange Postacoglu did a big interview with Optus Sport in Australia and some of the quotes that have come out of that I thought might be worth talking about. Um, He said this, he said, from my perspective, it's about everyone wants me to do is what everyone else does. So what he's saying there is, you know, when Spurs lose a game, a lot of people will straight away say he needs to be more pragmatic, he needs to be more defensive. And what Ange is saying there, it it frustrates him, I think. He says, now, I'm just not going to do that because there's a reason I'm here today. It's not because I've done what everyone else does. So I think everyone has their own unique journey to get to somewhere. I didn't get here by doing what everyone else is doing. So I get the people who say, be more pragmatic like everyone else, but I don't want to be like everyone else. What others see as stubbornness or me being dogmatic, I just see as real belief in what I'm doing. Now, I have to say, um, and let me know what you think in the comments, but for me, we've been asking for a manager like this for a long time. Now, you could say, oh, and Antonio Conte was incredibly uh, single-minded in what he wanted and what he wanted to do, and that would be true except what he wanted to do was incredibly frustratingly defensive and what he didn't have was kind of like the you know 100 150 million pound players like he had at Chelsea uh to to really pull that off kind of at the top end of the pitch you know Antonio Conte's whole thing was don't concede a goal and then let your strikers do the rest well unfortunately he didn't have the players to do both of those things for Tottenham and therefore he wasn't a good fit whereas Ange Postecoglou is more like Give me a squad of players who all want to grow with the club, who all want to work together, who all want to improve, and I will give them a system that I think can make it work. And we are still only a year and a bit into this project. And if we give Ange Postacoglu time, if we are patient with him, if we allow him to get the players in that he wants and he needs and grow the players that he currently has as well. Think of Deki Kulisevsky as a perfect example. This summer, so many people were saying, you have to sell Kulisevsky. He's not good enough on the right. He's so transparent. You know exactly what he's going to do. Well, now he's our best player. He's come inside into the 8-10 position, made an incredible relationship with um, James Madison, with Brennan Johnson, and he's one of the best players in the Premier League at the moment. So let Ange cook. That's what I'm saying. Let him cook. And uh, I like the fact that he's incredibly single-minded. He wants to play good football. He wants to attack. He wants to score more than everybody else. And if we give him the time and the tools, I'm confident that we will win things under Ange Postacoglu. But let me know what you think in the comments box below. It's a conversation. Of course it is. Uh, On to uh, Amanda Stabley. Some interesting stuff coming out the last couple of days. Um, Some of the businesses that she uh, has owned have started closing down. The latest updates on her business portfolio suggest that things perhaps uh, going in the wrong direction. However, um, just because two of her firms have closed their doors, PCP Capital Partners, which is one of them, was liquidated. Um, But just because two of these firms have uh, closed down, I actually think there's something more to it because potentially she could be closing down the current businesses she has so she can start new businesses to then potentially invest in Tottenham Hotspur. I think that's possibly what is going on there. And um, as I mentioned earlier this week in videos, she was seen at the Brentford game. She was seen at the American football. She is clearly very interested in what is going on at Spurs. And I think the likelihood is... A minority stake will be bought by her with um, support from some Middle East investment companies or whatever Middle East companies they are, probably from Qatar, I would suggest. And then they will try and buy more and more shares in the club until eventually, maybe sometime in the next few years, uh, she will have and her companies will have a majority stake in the club and can take over the day-to-day decision-making of what happens both on the football side and uh, behind the scenes. Um, One thing I should say about Amanda Stavely, I read a really interesting article, interview article with her a a couple of weeks ago, I think it might have been in the Times, Um, and she actually has uh, an incurable disease that means, um, you know, she she wants to live life to the full at the moment and really kind of uh, do the things that she's passionate about and that she loves. She comes across very well in this interview, and she says she's not going to be able to live too long, like maybe not longer than 10, 15, 20 years because the, the disease that she's had, I think she, I think it might be Huntington's disease. I could be wrong. But um, there's no cure for it and it just eventually kind of um, diminishes your, your brain's ability to, 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 to do things and for you to live. Um, so she wants to do the things she's passionate about and she wants to get back involved in Premier League football after having to leave Newcastle after putting together that public investment funds bid. And so Tottenham seems to be the place that she has her eye on. And um, 
from everything I read in terms of what the people that she worked with at Newcastle say, she's a really good person, has a lot of warmth about her, gets pretty hands-on with the players in terms of like texting them a lot and, and asking how they are and stuff like that. So that could be a real positive to bring some warmth into the boardroom. But of course, for me, an issue is who are these investors that are backing her? Who are these people? Unless we fully know who it is who's investing in the club, um, then I think there is always a little bit of a, a, a doubt there because... Yeah, I, I want the club to be run sustainably and I want to know who the owners are. Although, you know, playing devil's advocate to that, of course, we know who Joe Lewis is. And uh, just a year ago, basically, uh, he was arrested for and found guilty of some pretty important fraudulent crimes. So, you know, it's not like uh, Spurs have been owned by uh, any kind of angel in the last uh, 20 years or so. Anyway, moving on, uh, the latest on Paul Gasco, and I did a big uh, kind of rant the other day about how disgusting I thought it was that he'd come out and said that Spurs had been trying to charge him £400 for tickets and he'd said he will be supporting Rangers in the Europa League as a result of that. Well, his manager has come out this week and clarified what uh, I think he was trying to say. His manager, Katie Davis, told the Evening Standard, we should like to clarify that Paul's comments are not an accurate reflection of his relationship with Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, which has provided a huge amount of support to him over the years and always looks after its former players. In relation to the tickets, these were intended for associates of Paul and not for himself. Paul has never been charged by the club for a ticket to come to the match. Now, if that is not PR speak, I do not know what is. It feels pretty clear to me, and I'm not suggesting this is the wrong thing necessarily but it seems pretty clear to me that the club have got on to Paul Gascoigne's representatives and said uh, are you forgetting the amount of support we've given you when you've been in times of trouble uh, and Paul Gascoigne's management have come out and said um, actually you know Paul who unfortunately does have a, a lot of issues has probably said the wrong thing there and maybe misconstrued how he was feeling and uh, will put out a statement so a little bit of PR on both sides there but um I personally think that still, even if it is for associates of Paul Gascoigne, I think maybe Paul Gascoigne should be allowed to bring associates, friends of his, to matches if he wants to. That's how good and how important he was to this club. That's my personal feeling, but let me know if you feel different in the comments. Um, his management said at the end, he said, we hope this draw, uh, she said, we hope this draws a line under any misunderstanding on this matter and a positive dialogue is maintained moving forward. So like I said, uh, proper PR speak really, but... Um, you know, you'd expect nothing less, really. Uh, Pedro Porro registered his first assist for the Spanish national team during the week as they beat uh, Serbia 3-0 at home in the UEFA Nations League. Uh, Pedro Porro's uh, performance was 90 minutes played. That's really impressive for Porro, considering he wasn't in the uh, Spanish squad, of course, that won the Euros in the summer. He created a goal, six chances created, which is pretty good from right back, 67 out of 79 accurate passes, Five passes into the final third, two interceptions, one clearance, seven ball recoveries, five out of eight duels won, and three fouls won. So um, clearly Pedro's, Pedro Porro taking his Premier League form for Spurs into the national side there. Really excellent stuff. Uh, Christian Romero returned to action for Argentina in the early hours of Wednesday morning, and they beat uh, Bolivia 6-0 in their World Cup qualifier. He played the full 90 minutes completed 96% of his 112 passes in the game. However, that was early Wednesday morning, and as Big Ange Postacoglu was talking today, he said that still a couple of players hadn't come back in the in the building. You'd have to think that was probably Christian Romero and uh, Papa Matsar. So I wonder if maybe both of those then will be on the bench because it's the early start against West Ham, of course, on Saturday at 12.30. Papi Matsar actually played for Senegal against Malawi. Uh, he scored an 8.8 .8 rating apparently and was man of the match. 92% pass accuracy, 17 duels won, 7 successful dribbles, 102 touches, 5 accurate long balls, 10 recoveries and 3 chances created. So well done Papi Matsar. Uh, I think he will start getting more minutes for Spurs as the winter really starts to draw in and the Europa League games start to kick up again. Uh, and uh, Spurs really, and I think in the next kind of month or two, have pretty much two games a week the whole time. So I expect pa pa Pape Matsar to get back into the side regularly. Uh, according to the Independent, Spurs are one of the sides who are showing an interest in young Chelsea centre-back Josh Achimpong. The versatile defender is apparently receiving interest from some of the biggest clubs in Europe, uh, such as Real Madrid, Liverpool, Newcastle, and of course the biggest of all, Tottenham 
Hotspur. But once again, like I said at the top, with our interest in the in, in the Icelandic forward, Spurs really looking to pinch in and get some of the best talent around. And I love that about us. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I want us to be like the Dortmund of uh, the Premier League, where not only like Chelsea are we getting young talent, but we're saying to that young talent, you will have a chance in the first team. You will play minutes. And that is the kind of thing that young talent real young talent wants and that's why we managed to get Archie Gray and Lucas Bergvall and why Mikey Moore signed his contract because we are now one of the places to be if you are a young talent and you want to play exciting attacking football meanwhile Alfie Devine has given some quotes he's of course on loan at Westerlo in Belgium he said this at Spurs I had good conversations with Ange Postacoglu I went on the preseason tour with the first team and I still feel involved in the group you never know what the future will bring but I'm so happy to be in the picture Andy Scolding was recently here in Westerlo he's the performance manager at Spurs after the match we had a long chat and it's nice that they follow you so closely that involvement is motivating uh, I've also read some reports that uh, Divine is playing really well at Westerlo, uh, and actually it's only the really um, standout performances and goal scoring of centre-back Luka Vus- Vuskovic, who is also on loan from Spurs, that is stopping us getting kind of more exciting reports from Alfie Divine. but he's doing a great job out there, apparently. Um, just before I go on to some more wide-ranging uh, Premier League news and, of course, some international football news, guys, please do press that like button. Please do press subscribe. If you're not a subscriber already, please press that subscribe button for daily Spurs and Premier League content. Uh, I've got to talk about... Um, Thomas Tuchel being appointed as the England national manager. It surprised me a little bit, actually, because all of the reports coming out of the last few days were that Pep Guardiola uh, was going to be talked to or had been talked to and was potentially interested in being the England manager. But now it looks like Pep is going to sign a one-year extension at Man City. And as a result, England went pretty quickly for Thomas Tuchel. At first, I have to say I was pretty underwhelmed. Let me know what you think. Did you feel excited when you first heard about it? But then I read into it a little bit more and I remembered that actually Pep Guardiola himself talks about Thomas Tuchel as being the other uh, really amazing tactical mind of this generation of managers. Tuchel is also very clearly a very... um, strong man manager Uh, a lot of my friends and family I'm afraid say are Chelsea fans and they say that the players at Chelsea adored Tuchel and the fans adored Tuchel as well it was just the board that didn't like him and apparently that's the same at a lot of the clubs he's been at Uh, the board fell out with him at Bayern Munich as well and uh, it's never the fans or the players that don't like him he does play a relatively pragmatic style of play likes to build up from the back often with a three but when it gets into the final third he also wants Um, teams to be attacking and play off the cuff and that's something that I think could suit England's attacking talent Um, and I like the fact that on the sidelines he's pretty hard hitting like he's not afraid to say how he feels he's not afraid to get into some of those players and he has the trophies to back it up by which I mean because he's won a lot of trophies including the Champions League for Chelsea when he's shouting at some of those big egos playing for England they will listen to him because he has the silverware to back it up and they'll think to themselves okay this guy does know what he's doing and I will listen to what he's saying because he has experience of winning these big games so it could be a really good decision I don't care one iota that he's German I don't think it should matter a jot he was just the best manager that they could get at at this time for England they've signed him up to an 18-year contract so it's No skin off our nose if it doesn't go well and then he doesn't do well in the World Cup and then we move on and we get a manager after that. And um, yeah, it could be an exciting time. Let's see what happens. And of course, Spurs legend Harry Kane has played for him for a season, seemed to really enjoy playing under Thomas Tuchel, scored a lot of goals. And um, let's hope that that can continue for the English national side. Let me know what you think of the Tuchel appointment in the comments below and we'll have a little chat about it. On to some uh, Premier League transfer news. Alfonso Davis is interesting Manchester United. Uh, Bayern Munich's Canadian defender is only 23, but uh, he's a key target for them. Also, Paris Saint-Germain remain interested in signing Marcus Rashford from Man United and United apparently opening open to selling Anthony uh, and will take as little as 40 million pounds for him even though they paid between 80 and 85 million pounds for him but it really hasn't worked out and uh, his career has absolutely nosedived since he went to Old Trafford. Um, Barcelona apparently interested in Chelsea's uh, midfielder Romeo Lavia and their attacking midfielder Carney Chukwameka both 20 years old they're two of the players that Chelsea bought for big money um, 
uh, in their kind of hoovering up of all the young talent from around Europe. But Barca are now interested in taking them in January, apparently. And Chelsea also not prepared to entertain offers for French forward Christopher Nkunku uh, amid links with Paris Saint-Germain. It still amazes me that Nkunku isn't starting more games for Chelsea. I know Nicholas Jackson is improving, but Nkunku, I think, is a really great finisher. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if, if he gets more games for Chelsea. And finally, over to St. James's Park up north, and Swedish forward Alexander Isak has put clubs, including Arsenal, on alert as he is stalling on signing a new contract at Newcastle. Um, he, unfortunately, is out of Spurs' price range, and we went for Dominic Solanke instead, but I really do rate Alexander Isak, and it would scare me a lot if he went to South London to play for the Gooners. Anyway, that is the end of today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Um, I'm actually going on holiday tomorrow to Barcelona. I'm going to be watching the Spurs-West Ham game with the Barcelona Spurs in a, an Irish boozer in Barcelona, but I won't be doing many videos next week as a result, but I will try and get you... Uh, a a post-match reaction video here on YouTube after the West Ham game and uh, and also a a post-match reaction for the Europa League game. I think it's against AZ Alkmaar next Thursday. But I'll be back on the regular video hunt after I get back a week tomorrow, guys. Uh, Have a great week and, of course, come on you Spurs.